welcome to my youtube channel so this is the continuation vlog of my how i planned my civil wedding in three days vlog and on this vlog i'll be giving you a well detailed and um, explanation or process of how the whole planning went so first of all we have thought about doing this um, whole um, civil wedding marriage ceremony on a tuesday like i said earlier you can actually do a big wedding I came in on a K1 visa and then you're actually required to get married within 90 days of coming into the United States. So you can actually do have a big wedding ceremony or you can just go to the courthouse and have your marriage ceremony done there and get your um, marriage certificate, uh, which is still the same process. And then planning a, a wedding in 90 days was <laughs> impossible for me to do so. We didn't want anything that would just stress us out. We just decided to do the whole courthouse uh, marriage ceremony and it was the best idea uh, we had. Um, so we decided to do the, um, the marriage cer ceremony on a Friday in, in March. Friday, March. I think Friday, 3rd of March. So... Uh, we talked about it on Tuesday and on Wednesday, I decided to call the, the courthouse here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, basically, I'd advise that before you make this call, just um, get a pen and paper. I'm so sorry I'm looking down at my, um, at my jutter here. That's because I have a well-detailed outline process of how this whole thing is going to go. So I just want to give you guys the details as it is. So the first thing I did on Wednesday was to call the courthouse. And when I called the courthouse, uh, I think a robot answered or this answering machine thing answered. And then um, they'll give you quite a few options, quite some options. Uh, and I clicked on the marriage license option. And then basically they would give you um, names of the judges that are actually available uh, for your marriage ceremony and their phone numbers so like i advised earlier have a pen and paper because as they are giving out these names they give out the phone numbers as well so it's just best to write them out because it goes quite fast so i wrote them out i got about um seven judges that were available for that week and after that i decided to call these numbers that i got to fix an appointment for the marriage ceremony at the courthouse i called a few numbers some of them answered some went to voicemail i left a voicemail telling them to call me back when they got my message i dropped my i left my number and it was just very straightforward the ones that picked actually um told me some told me friday was taken uh, i could book an appointment for the next friday or the next week we just wanted to do it on friday and get it over with because of um hobby was working and then he didn't get to take time off work and that was very hectic planning so and then we wanted something that was also in the morning hours so he can easily go back to work so we wanted something between 10 and um 2 p.m we didn't want anything beyond 2 p.m but the ones we called the ones i called some of them i called um were suggested some, the ones that told me friday was available were saying uh, between 4 30 and 5 p.m and i didn't want that i asked why though and she said that um they had their normal hearings and court proceedings in the morning and then they do the whole wedding and marriage ceremonies in the evening and i told her i would call her back when i finished talking to hubby and then would know if we we're going to go with that time but then i was lucky that the number one of the number i called that went to voicemail and i left my voice my phone number called me back and then it was <laughs> it was just god's doing uh, she told me friday was available and she asked what time would, would be very convenient for me because i'd explained to her that hobby was working and then we wanted something that was between 10 a.m and 1 1 and 2 p.m and we scheduled a time for 1 30 p.m which was very perfect and the next thing she asked was my marriage license so uh before you make the mistake i made and call go straight to calling the courthouse within your own um 
county or um or state in the united states uh the first thing you do is to get your marriage license so she was kind enough to send me the link of where i could get my marriage license to my email and um give me the phone number as well so um i told her to hold the time and date of friday 1 30 p.m for the courthouse down for me and then when i finish the process of getting my li the marriage license i will call her back to confirm she told me i could actually get that marriage license the same day i went i go in for it uh and so i wanted to do that first we're supposed to do that first before confirming the appointment so i called the number she gave me to of where i could get my marriage license here in minneapolis and then another answering machine or voice or robot answered kept answering basically they were supposed to transfer me to a customer care um, provider but <laughs> i kept they kept keeping me on hold and on hold for like a, a like a while but while keeping your hold they kept referring me back to their website which is the link she had sent to my email so i went back to their website which was the best option i read through them um, ch i chose the um, the, the place for the marriage license read through the whole thing the first thing basically you do when you get to that website is to number one thing they'll ask you to do is to fill out a pre-application form for the web um, for your marriage license so i did that i filled out that form i am supposed to print out two copies of that form uh the next thing you would do is uh to book an appointment to just keep taking it to the next day so the next spot was booking the appointment for to come in and get your marriage license so when you click on that link it's it will show you um it will show you you put in your email address you put in your phone number you also put in your name and your spouse's name then it will then take you to what date you want so we chose thursday which was the next day at 8 30 a.m so it was easy for hobby to go back to work after that uh 8 30 a.m and i confirmed it so they'll send you a confirmation email with a barcode to your email address that you provided then after that the next place it takes you to is um for that booking your appointment the next place it takes you to is to read out the, the the documents that you would need to come with when you're going for when you're going to the uh, marriage license while you're filling out the application form they give you a list of address you can always use your google map and just like put it put it in and see the one closest to where you live so i picked the closest the closest address to where i live which was the hennepin county county center uh it was about uh, 35 minutes from my house so i picked that then booked my appointment so the ids you would need to go in there with the documents you need to go in there with is number one the pre-application form you already filled out i said print out two copies you can go with one of that number two your id which can be your driver's license your international passport your birth certificate the government government um, certificate that has your um, date of birth on it um any school certificate that has your date of birth in it basically they just want something that has your full name and your date of birth on that particular id so it was just preferred for me to go with go with my um international passport so if you have an international passport you're good to go uh if you don't have an international passport you can go with your driver's license and your birth certificate or you can go with your birth certificate alone it has your name and it has your date of birth on it so um that was the documents that we were supposed to come in with another thing they would tell you is um you're supposed to have this was this one will be at the courthouse I'll, I'll i'll say that next when we get there uh i think that's that uh they'll also charge you a fee of a hundred and fifteen dollars uh you can either pay with your credit card pay with cash or you pay with a check um basically if you took there yeah, there's a um 12 hour pre-marriage pre pre session or lecture basically we didn't have the time to take that class because we're going in for the marriage license the very next day i was booking the appointment on wednesday we're going for the marriage license on thursday 
So if we are taking that class, the fee would have come down from $115 to $57. But we didn't take that class. So we already knew that we're going with going in with we're going to pay the $115. So on Thursday morning, we left and then we got there. We actually got there at 8 10 a.m. We we're actually earlier than our appointment time, but it was fine because the place was actually very free, very empty. Uh we were the third people actually in the building with the third people that were in the building so basically you just put in your phone number that you use to register for the appointment or you can show the barcode that is in your email and then they give you a seat number so the, the hall is like the place is like a banking hall so they have different stalls so when it when it gets to your number any store can actually call up your number the tag number that will be given to you at the door and then we got there and almost immediately we got there we didn't even get to sit down before they told us we had a store open for us to go in and then very pleasant people uh we gave them that copy of the pre-application form that i already filled out and then our id cards so uh she used the pre-application form as, as a guideline to what she was going to fill she was filling out another application form on her computer with our um, ids and then after she did that she printed it out and then she showed us to confirm the name and um and the last names and everything that was there everything was correct and then she asked me if i was changing my last name i said yes and then after that we just signed uh she asked if i had my social security number which i, I haven't got my social security number yet but hobby had his own social security number so I ticked I did not have my hero down the social security number and then we signed and then after that uh, she printed out another document and then she told us that this particular that was the other document she printed out was the marriage license we're not supposed to sign anything on it or write anything on it until we get until we got to the courthouse so the judge will fill out the empty spaces that was there and then we're going to sign under our names right there at the courthouse we shouldn't sign we shouldn't sign write anything we should just give the envelope and everything to the judge she also gave us a small envelope that had an address a mailing address on it they were going to mail that document after it's been signed back to them and in about in about three or four weeks we'll get the original copy of the marriage license in our mail and that was that she asked me if i wanted my pre-application form back or she could shred it i said she could shred it she gave us the envelope and we we're on our way that was it on friday which was the day for the civil wedding at about uh, we got to the courthouse by 105 p.m and while another requirement for coming to the courthouse so i'll tell you the list of things you need to go to the courthouse with Number one, that document that was given to you, the marriage license that was given to you, just take the whole envelope so that you don't miss anything. That's that. That's number one. Number two, you have to come with at least minimum of two witnesses over the ages of 16. And like I, like I, when we got here, when we moved here, we did not have, we don't know. We didn't know anybody. We did not have too many friends i think hobby knew about two people two of his old friends um whom he told about it and told them uh, the time and date so they can they could be our witnesses and when we got to the court house one of the witnesses was actually there with us he came in early the other one was running late and then the judge very nice pleasant judge the judge just told us that it was fine he could actually provide us with the other the second witness because we needed to at least two witnesses he could provide the second witness we got in there we got in we got in there at 105 we waited for the other witness to come in and about exactly 1 30 p.m we went in and then the whole um marriage uh, proceeding took place and eventually we sat down uh we signed um we sat down first thing he asked me if I was changing my last name. I was like, yes, again. And then he asked me to start practicing my new signature. So my, my signature, my old signature has my maiden name. That's my 
Amos, my last name, on it. But I had to change it to, to something that is more recent that I'll be signing on my marriage license and something that I'll be able to sign subsequently after that, which is what I had to <laughs> I had to practice. I picked something very easy that I know that I'll be able to remember or sign subsequently after the whole marriage ceremony. And then when I did that, he then asked if we are in agreement with everything and then we both signed the marriage certificate and that was that we took pictures uh and we're done with the whole marriage ceremony uh hobby went back to work because he had a limited time to be there and then in the evening we just went for dinner to celebrate with the friends that actually came with us uh for the marriage ceremony and to be our witnesses and we're done so that's how i planned my civil wedding in three days <laughs> guys it sounds easy like i am saying it right now but trust me you need to make a whole lot of phone calls a whole lot of inquiries it's not so easy it's not so easy it's not so that's that guys this will, this is where i'll be ending this vlog please don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to turn on your notification bell and see you on our next video Thank you.